Welcome to our Consumer and Trends 2022 Roundtable. Thank you very much for joining us in this session. It's great to see you all here on this sunny morning. In our sessions today, we're with more than 200 people from seven different countries representing a big variety of brands, from big and well-known global players to our beloved local heroes. Which shows again how many of you are eager to understand what is happening out there. And as important, what does this mean for you and your brand? And also how you can use these trends to your advantage. You might have joined us in our previous European session, already read our book zine, that would be great. But if not, do not worry. This roundtable is here to give you both an overview and a deeper understanding of what is happening in tech and services. Today, that's exactly what we have in mind for you. First of all, we want to show you what are the major consumer trends in Europe, and then we'll show some inspiring examples, how different brands are already activating these trends in different tech and services sectors, from finance to durables, from automotive to fashion, and even and we have an example of a beautiful museum to show. But before we do that, um, let me introduce our team for you today. My name is Arjan Venega and I'm a senior business director at Insights. And I have the privilege to work together with a great team of dedicated and creative researchers to empower brand builders like you to shape the sustainable future of brands. And I'm really proud to work for clients like Hefro, Premier Inn, G-Star and Philips. Today I'll be your host and introduce you the overview of trends. After that, my dear colleagues Paul and Ian will take over and reveal some of the most interesting trends and brand examples for you. Paul is a senior business director with 25 years experience delivering insight across a range of sectors and methods, most recently spe specializing in online communities. Paul has worked across numerous service businesses, including Nationwide, Zurich, EDF and EasyEd. Then we have Lane. Lane is our senior research manager and working for a set of national and international brands within the tech and services sector, such as IKEA, Twins, Angie, Electrobel, H&M and Toyota. So where does that leave you today? Well, you might be aware that Better Together is our tech line. So if you have any questions or comments, please share these in the chat. We also prepared some challenging questions and are really keen to read your views on these. At the end, we will have some time available to discuss and answer the questions. Now we have introduced ourselves, let's dive into what we're here for today. Just like last year, we explored and validated the key consumer trends that will define this year. We revealed these in our Culture and Trends Report 2022, which we gave the theme Rebound and Rebalance. And that is definitely how I feel about this upcoming year. And I guess this is probably not unfamiliar for you as well. Of course, let's talk about it. The pandemic, it hit us all, right? When it all started, our normal lives stopped to some extent. And since then, we've been waiting to move along. We were all in this waiting game for the so-called new normal or back to normal. But with the enduring pandemic reality, continuous outbursts of natural disasters and acts of social injustices, people started accepting the ongoing uncertainty by reclaiming their lives. For some, this meant pivoting things on a personal or professional level, for example, by moving houses, maybe changing partners, extending the family or quitting their jobs. In fact, 2021 is also labeled as the great resignation. Between April and September, more than 24 million people were quitting their jobs in the US alone. And this was happening in Europe as well. Research showed that 46% of employees were planning to quit in the next 6 to 12 months, which led to almost twice as many actual job leavers last year. It showed us that people actually started to change, some with life-changing decisions, while others focused on small tweaks and rituals, all to become happy again. It's in the nature of our species, right? Humans want to be happy and we will always adjust to the circumstances. So we did. We learned to live with the restrictions and as a result, found new ways to make the best of it. Some adopted new hobbies. Working from home had its advantages after all, and we chose with whom we wanted to be. So it was the year where people tried to find a balance between the short term, like living in the moment, focusing on the now and embracing these small moments of joy, and the long term, 
we needed to plan for the future as a, as a way to find stability and purpose again. And it's this duality, balancing of pleasure with purpose, that we seek to achieve happiness. And then happiness. Well, happiness is at the forefront of our culture and trans human drivers model, which is the core of our trans work. Positive psychology learned us that there are seven universal drivers which we seek to satisfy in order to achieve happiness and well-being. You see them here on the screen and probably recognize in your own life as well. And while their core remains unchanged, the way this is manifested in our behavior is influenced by the world around us. Obviously with a pandemic like COVID, but just look around what is happening in and how you feel about Ukraine and you will feel how it works. In our trend report 2021, we identified three key drivers. As you probably have experienced yourself, health, security and relationships were at the forefront of our minds as we battled through the pandemic. But in 2021, we will definitely see a change. With the pandemic hopefully gone and our newfound opportunities, it's time to focus on our new way forward. We learned what is important to us, started to reevaluate how we spend our time and energy in a world where uncertainty is the only given. So positive emotions and achievement, they are becoming stronger and will be the drivers for consumers this year. You might wonder how we came to these conclusions. Well, the starting point of our work was a qualitative exploration with our Illum network of leading edge consumers. This led to the identification of 10 consumer trends for 2022. Here you see them all, from considered rituals to uncompromised values and eight more trends ready to go. Some are completely new, while others are evaluations of last year trends. However, as market researchers, we not only want to understand which trends are manifesting around the world, but also how this happens and what you could do with these trends, obviously. This is why in collaboration with our field partner Dynata, we quantified these 10, 10 trends with over 15,000 consumers in 70 markets. And then in the final stage of quantification, it enables us to score the trends for each market or region and therefore allows us to map these trends based on two parameters. The first one, that's the attitude one, that reflects the extent people identify with a trend. And the second one is behavior, which reflects to what extent people act upon it. And as a result, the map shows four quadrants, which is telling us where each trend is in its life cycle. Well, here you see all the trends in Europe mapped in these quadrants. Top left, we have establishing trends. Those have higher behavior and lower attitude. And these are the trends that have generally been accepted as a normal part of life. In Europe, we only find one, which is spontaneous play. Top right, in expanding, we have high behavior and high attitude. So these trends are really gaining momentum right now. Here we find, for example, the trends considered rituals and extending lifestyles. Bottom left, there are the nascent trends, trends that currently have low attitudinal and behavioral adoption, like redefining normal and resilient structures. These trends represent more leading edge ways of thinking. So if you are looking to do something truly new in your category or with your brand, these trends could be a great place to start. Next slide, please. Just to check, Lane, my screen is frozen. Do, do we have the slide in front of us with the four selected ones? Yes, we have it in front of yes. us. OK, I don't see it, but that's OK. Um, from my perspective, all of these trends are really interesting and could inspire you to grow your brand. But for time reasons, we can dive into all 10. So based on the trend mapping and our analysis, which trends are most interesting for you, we like to highlight these four trends. Paul, can I ask you to tell us a bit more about considered rituals? Of course, thanks Ian. Morning everyone. Um, before we go into the details of the trends we've picked out for today, just wanted to do a really quick introduction just to re-emphasize what Ian was saying about the way we've identified these trends. So 
As Ian's already mentioned, consumers are seeking to return a sense of balance to their lives. And that duality that, that Ian referenced is, is something that means a lot of the interesting trends actually lay at the intersection of different drivers. So actually that's reflected in how we'll present these today. In front of you, you can see a slide with uh, both achievement and health highlighted. Um, then uh, achievement being represented in yellow, health being represented in pink, and the combination of those actually represents the considered rituals trend. And this trend reflects that while self-optimization culture is slowing down, the cultural expectations to succeed still exist. So to overcome this tension in the future, we'll still strive to meet goals, but we'll increasingly set habits that mirror our own internal rhythms, cycles and mood, making sure our own health and well-being is integrated into our success, or even might be a marker of that success in itself. As we've, as we've already described, we've mapped the trends according to their adoption, both attitudinally and behaviourally. And in the grid you can see in front of you, we've actually split out markets to show where they sit on the grid. And highlighted in black are the European markets that we, we looked at. Um, Considered rituals is the only trend that we actually see placed entirely in the expanding quadrant across all markets. So it's certainly something that we as humans are keen to get behind, both attitudinally and behaviourally. Europe is slightly ahead of this at an overall level, but not dramatically so, as you can see in the distribution. We've also highlighted key sectors where these trends are associated according to consumers. So in this case, it's fashion, it's fast moving consumer goods and financial services. But energy and utilities, travel and automotive also feature, as you can see on the right hand side. Consumers will be thinking more and more about the interconnection between their physical, mental and biological selves. Brands can support self-improvement journeys by helping people better understand themselves and what our bodies and minds need to inspire positive yet realistic rituals. And the first example of this is the online service piece from Happy Money. Income disruption increases both your financial stress, but also your general stress levels. And while we may not be able to immediately change our financial circumstances, we can certainly change how we experience them. And unlike other wellness tools that use things like Quizlets or have been developed by marketers to, to cut through, actually the six week peace program was designed by researchers in the areas of clinical psychology, uh, positive psychology and cognitive neuroscience. So this wellness tool is, is very much grounded in science and features weekly exercises that can be completed in under 10 minutes a day. It's a free tool, anyone can sign up for it. And weekly exercises include muscle relaxation, challenging negative thoughts, problem solving, telling your money story, mindfulness, even savouring small pleasures. And upon registering, you take an assessment that defines your money personality and level of stress. And each exercise is designed to build skills aimed at helping to address those stress levels while promoting positive associations. So by building something accessible and available in small, easy to digest moments, Peace is a clear example of helping consumers build positive being rituals without having to commit unrealistic amounts of time or mental effort, little and often helping tackle the big topic of money. Thanks, Paul. Uh, another example we want to showcase today is Cove. Uh, Cove is a wearable that helps you sleep better and uh, stress less. Uh, it also improves your mental skills to make sure your body and mind can function at the highest level. Now, the desire, designers, they call it a hug for your mind because it lowers your stress, improves your sleep, but also increases your focus without the need of making any incremental changes to your daily lifestyle. So that means that you can easily wear Cove while doing other things, uh, such as work, playing with the kids, uh, walking your dog or even uh, when relaxing. So it's thanks to the vibrations that Cove is activating a brain pathway and it, feel, it helps you to feel more calm and uh, emotionally balanced. Now, thanks to this technology, uh, which is completely focused on giving you as a consumer all the peace uh, of mind that you need, um, you are, you're enabled to find better that balance uh, in life without making any big uh, changes. So it just fits into your uh, lifestyle. 
And that is exactly um, how brands can support consumers in this trend of uh, considered rituals. Um, as Paul already mentioned, it's all about offering consumers uh, the tools that help us to better understand ourselves, but also what our body and mind uh, really needs. Um, this is now an example from the technology sector, uh, but we also notice the same examples popping up within uh, other sectors. For example, uh, Hayat Hotels is teaming up with Headspace uh, to help customers to wind down, stress less, and also to sleep better. And they do that via or via their mindfulness and sleep exercises in their uh, app. Now, based on the examples that we found uh, within this trend, we really note that the emphasis on holistic health, so the interrelatedness between your mind and body, it will continue to inspire wellness tools. Um, also, they will support this inner desire for uh, balance. And as you can already see on screen, we have a first uh, poll uh, live because before we take a look at the second trend, uh, we want to quickly check how you as a brand have been acknowledging the trend so far. So I'll give you a, a little moment to fill in the poll and then we'll come back to it uh, at the end of the session to see how far you already are as a brand. Um, as a second trend uh, today, a uh, second trend we want to address is the trend of extending life. Um, as consumers, we have been recognizing uh, that constantly buying uh, new products, even if they are marketed as a, as a greener alternative, cannot be sustainable on the long uh, term. Therefore, um, we take uh, pride in creatively extending the life cycle of our things in the best possible way. That can range from plants and furniture to also appliances. As you can see on slide, the underlying human driver uh, playing into this trend are on the one hand engagement and on the other hand, finding a certain sense of meaning in life. Looking at this trend on our uh, mapping showcases Europe to be ahead of this trend if you compare it to the other global uh, countries. Now, the sector playing field of this trend is especially situated between consumer electronics, fashion and home improvement and gardening. But the question is, of course, what do consumers really want and how can brands step into this? Well, what we recognized in this trend is that consumers really want uh, and express also uh, a need for support in finding solutions, but also opportunities uh, that help them to minimize waste in the most uh, sustainable way. And of course, there are different ways or routes for brands uh, to tackle this trend and of course the underlying consumer needs. Um, so we have picked out a few examples to showcase how brands have been doing it so far. And that brings us to our first example of uh, Sonos. So in 2019, um, Sonos launched a trade-up scheme uh, offering existing uh, owners of a Sonos speaker a 30% discount on a new speaker. The only requirement was that owners had to activate what they call the recycle mode on their uh, existing Sonos speaker, making it actually permanently unusable, even if there was nothing wrong with the speaker. So because the recycle mode makes the speaker uh, unusable, the company was criticized uh, for actually encouraging people to disable a speaker that had nothing wrong with it. So um, Sonos realized that it would be much more environmentally friendly to let people sell their old speakers or donate them to um, others, such as a family uh, member or friends or even a charity uh, shop. So they really took a U-turn uh, in their approach and they decided to remove that requirement of the recycle modes and started actually encouraging people uh, to extend the life of their current uh, speaker. So other examples um, that we also um, see playing into this trend are, for example, Amazon Renewed and uh, Reboxed, um, where big players such as Amazon uh, play into this trend by launching a new service on top of what they have already been doing, um, such as a renewed service. We also see new players uh, stepping into the market, and that's our example, Reboxed. Uh, Reboxed is a, a recent startup. Um, they go one step further uh, than other businesses. Why? because they really built their business model around the mindset of extending uh, life. So for them, it's not just an extra service on top. It's uh, really the mindset that they uh, follow, that they built their business around in order to uh, support and encourage, of course, uh, the likewise consumers.
And changes are happening in the manufacturing processes too. So Renault's refactory is structured around four activity centres, bringing together different disciplines and roles that would otherwise have been lost, but are now put to use in a circular economy model. Operational since September 2021, the factory has already reconditioned over 1,500 vehicles and continues to grow. Simultaneously, they're developing applications for the second life of batteries and new energies. And by the end of 2021, they'll be doing 2,000 battery repairs and actually more than 20,000 repairs by 2030. A third focus in the factory is on the recycling and reuse of parts and materials to maximise the use of reused spare parts actually within the factory and ensure they're not just lost to landfill. Finally, an innovation and training centre project sits within the factory. By the end of 2021, 700 employees will have joined the refactory's activities. And by 2030, the site plans to employ more than 3,000 people. The refactory project is at the heart of Renault's sustainable development strategy, but interestingly, has also been reflected back towards the consumer, with pre-owned being brought front and centre. A recent advert that I'll show in a moment made a big play on the long-standing history Renault has of celebrating reuse. So as consumers become more vocal about how we deal with product life cycles and brands rise to meet the sustainability challenge we all face, there's clear opportunity for brands to be an enabler of more sustainable ways of consuming goods. So once again, we'll just ask a quick poll about this trend and about how you guys are uh, potentially acting on it. Just give you a few more seconds to reply and then we'll move on to the next trend. OK, perfect. Thanks, Paul. Um, Indeed, our third trend for uh, today is, um, as you can see on slide, the nonlinear lifestyles. Um, it's stepping into the underlying human drivers of, on the one hand, achievement, and on the other hand, uh, relationship. Um, so what is this trend about? Well, during the pandemic, a lot of consumers actually realized that what we call the current life stage rule book is uh, no longer valid. Um, so we started re-evaluating our roles, but also our societal systems and uh, opened up for change. For example, we noticed people taking unconventional uh, career pivots, but also, uh, for example, older people moving back into city center uh, hubs. Now, what is important to remember from this trend is the fact that our age Will no longer define the path that we are expected to take in life. So we have become a lot more open for new, maybe unconventional opportunities, but we expect also brands to support us in this. This trend is uh, more of an expanding uh, trend, especially within uh, Europe, and we're a bit ahead of the curve compared to other uh, companies. 
countries. Um, now we note that this uh, trend is actually one of the strongest within uh, the sector playing field of uh, fashion, financial service and consumer electronics. But again, of course, what does this mean for uh, consumers and how can brands step into this? Well, what we noticed within this trend is that consumers really want brands to support them or um, encourage them in taking these unconventional uh, career uh, switches, but also the new life paths or even breaking through uh, traditional stereotypes. Of course, how, brand can, how brands can do this um, differ from brand to brand, but also from the overall approach you take as a brand. Um, we've seen examples of brands taking the opportunity to break down old uh, stereotypes, but we also seen brands taking the opportunity um, to shed light on groups that have not received uh, enough attention so far. So again, uh, we have selected some examples, so let's take a look. Um, one of the brands we want to showcase today is uh, this one, La Gata, um, as they really break through the traditional age stereotype of active wear being only for young active women. So they are offering active wear for the so-called bolder generation that's over uh, 40. And uh, by focusing on this bolder generation, they really showcase what the active wear industry had been, has been missing all the time. So um, they are designing what they call anti-boring and anti anti-aging outfits um, that are thoughtfully designed, uh, but also developed by the women who also wear them. Um, so their goal as La Gata is really to make sure that no woman uh, will ever need to compromise on, uh, on comfort, on fit or style when it comes to um, active wear. Now, a second example we want to show you is uh, GBC, a GBC in Belgium. Uh, they launched in August 2021 a gender neutral kids collection. Uh, it consists of jumpers in different colors, uh, saying things like, when I grow up, I want to be a CEO, uh, a game developer, an animal doctor, or even a firefighter. And by means of the collection, um, the ambition of GBC was to really break through uh, the classic gender stereotypes and uh, also learn kids that it's perfectly fine to be different from, has been, from what has been told uh, so far. Now they went, they went one step uh, further and GBC also introduced a coloring book uh, entitled The uh, Dream Outside the Lines. Um, I think you can see a picture on the next uh, slide of that. And um, yeah, indeed, there we are. And through the pictures, um, they really want to showcase less common professions, uh, such as a female firefighter or a construction worker. And uh, also the ambition of GBC here was to really help break through these persistent uh, stereotypes among kids, but also uh, among their parents, uh, of course. Thanks, Lee. Our next example is the startup Lean, a financial services platform specifically designed for gig economy workers. Gig and independent workers have different needs than salaried employees when it comes to financial products. And pitched as an effort to support gig workers with a platform that offers access to products that are custom built for their needs, Lean expects to be rolling out to hundreds of thousands of gig workers over the coming months. Secondly, ShareCover in Australia offers home insurance for hosts renting out property on Airbnb or car insurance for rideshare drivers, not covered by traditional insurance. Similarly, insurers in multiple regions are offering new ways to ensure the risk of working from home. The opportunity for brands to better reflect the world around them is apparent, be that holding up a mirror to societal shifts or exploring the opportunities in underrepresented or emergent audiences. Brands that recognise and react to emergent audience and scaling behaviours in our new economy stand to gain from getting in at the ground floor. And once again, we're just going to put a quick poll up just to see how you guys are reacting to this particular trend. Again, I'll give it a few seconds just before moving on. So lots of love for JBC. So hopefully, hopefully there's there's a lot of action in this in this particular trend. Fantastic. Our final trend today is resilient structures. This sits at the intersection of health and security. As we re-socialise back into society at our own pace, 
We want to feel safer and more confident in our immediate surroundings. We expect our community and our workplace to provide us with tools that make us feel less vulnerable. While it's lower down in the matrix, we felt that this is one to keep in mind as we emerge from the pandemic into an uncertain world. While some consumers will be raring to get back to normality, for many, the emergence and learning to live with COVID means this trend is one to keep an eye on. As the sector breakdown shows, if you are responsible for looking after people's money, power, home safety and security, or how they travel, you should be particularly interested in this trend. Consumers want spaces that will be designed to enable mental and physical well-being rather than productivity. Brands can help us feel safer in our surroundings by creating initiatives that put people at the heart of our spaces and services to build inner confidence and mental resilience. An example from financial services, and more specifically cards and payments, is the MasterCard debit card curve. You can link your curve card to existing debit or credit cards. It then acts as a front, passing on the transactions to your linked card as a purchase with no need to reveal your true card details. You can thus pay by credit card, even if the shop doesn't accept them. You can earn rewards with existing cards, even if you need to make cash withdrawals. But most conveniently, you can collect all your cards in one place and just remember one pin and also are able to go back in time and change the card that you've actually used to pay. This combination of security and empowerment over spending offers a layer of reassurance in the rising face of identity theft and personal data scams. Perfect. Another example uh, we want to show you today is the virtual uh, tour of Musée d'Orsay in, uh, in Paris. So what they did is they actually created a virtual experience really on the terms of the consumers. So while a virtual tour doesn't quite compare to being able to experience and really breed the art masterpieces in, uh, in Musée d'Orsay, exploring it online um, was a safe way for art fans to explore, but also an opportunity to finally experience uh, the artworks unabated, uninterrupted but also a bit more intimate. Um, the good thing for the art fans was also that they could enjoy it from the comfort of their sofa or even their uh, bed. So the idea behind this virtual tour is that you, um, as an art fan, you click your way through the be very best parts of uh, the museum and thanks to the interactive galleries, you can also experience the artwork from, uh, from very close by. Now, this might sound a bit new uh, to some, but actually a lot of brands have been um, tapping into this trend within different sectors. Um, think about the augmented reality app from IKEA, um, enabling consumers to redesign their living room or other rooms um, from what they also call a rather safe place, uh, being home. Um, and another example we want to show you is uh, Mercedes, because um, they're presenting their online showroom, um, online of course, and they enable consumers to experience uh, a showroom visit um, online, but also um, the opportunity to uh, buy a car online. So let's have a look at their uh, commercial. So be it offering protection to you as you navigate the world beyond your home, or be it by helping you to bring, uh, bring um, back the outside world in. Um, as, Ma as Paul already mentioned, putting people at the heart uh, of spaces uh, can really lead to success uh, for brands. Um, so before we wrap up, uh, let's again check how you as a brand uh, have been acknowledging the trend uh, so far. So um, take a few minutes for uh, the poll that is uh, live. We see some different answers coming in. Perfect. I think we have 13 responses so far, so uh, these people have responded.
So as we were mentioning in the resilient structures trend, putting people at the heart is very much a theme of today. We've highlighted just four out of the 10 trends that I mentioned, and would love to explore more of these ideas with you individually if we've inspired your curiosity. We recognise, of course, that the challenge for you is how you take some of the inspiration we've shared and apply it to your business in your day to day role. Each of you will be being asked for specific answers to specific business challenges by your stakeholders. And so often we know that these sorts of ideas have to be filed away for later. But what we hope we've shown is that the trends are providing new opportunities in your tradition, in, in your sectors and are being combined to create new areas through the intersection of traditional ca categories being matched to emergent themes. For example, both automotive and energy companies coming into close contact around electric vehicles to meet demands for more sustainable transportation options. As with all we do, our trends work starts with people and brings an outside in perspective to help you and your stakeholders bridge the gap that can exist between your life experiences and those of your end user. By thinking people first, we believe you'll be better placed than ever to take advantage of where people are heading. So have you and your brand started to recognise these trends? Have you responded? How will you? And how do you ensure it's done in a way that's authentic to your brand? So the question is, of course, how can uh, we help you as uh, as Insights Consulting? And um, on this slide, uh, you see our credo. So um, our credo is really better together, which means that we believe that by working together with the right people, uh, we can get to better uh, results. That also means when it comes to activating uh, trends uh, within your company, it's important to uh, work with the right people uh, to do so. Now, before uh, you do anything, uh, it's important to, first of all, understand understand how each of these trends um, is impacting your specific target audience and uh, category. So the learnings we have shared today, they are applicable to the general consumer or the population and also some overarching uh, categories. But of course, things may be a bit different uh, when we nuance uh, into your brand or when we drill down into your uh, brand and target group. Um, second, uh, it's important that you should discover which trend really resonate best with your own brand and uh, target group. So really look at the fit between a specific brand and your own um, a trend and your own brand, of course. Be because if your brand image uh, conflicts with a trend, um, it may it may not be credible to uh, activate them, of course. Now that also means that in the in the process of selecting a trend um, and activating it in the right way, it's also important to work with the right uh, consumer. So especially um, as Ariane also explained, when we are dealing with a more nascent trend, um, the average consumer may not be the right one to talk to. Um, you might need a bit more of a trend savvy uh, consumers who are already ahead of the pack. Now, finally, when it comes to um, activating a trend, it's important to be creative and think beyond the obvious. So on the one hand, it's important to engage all relevant internal uh, inspirators, but also consider getting some outside creativity in to make sure you can really activate your uh, trends.